Where will you spend eternity after you die? Where will you spend your forever and ever after you die? The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Only one God and only one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness, that God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed unto the world, received, received up into glory, Repent, believe the gospel, believe on Christ, and that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the holy scriptures. Repent, believe the gospel, do not be deceived, people. Do not be deceived, thinking that you are going to heaven, because you go to a building called church, thinking that you're right with God. Because of your good works, by grace we are saved and has raised us together and made us together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace, people, by grace we are saved through faith. And that, it is not of ourselves. It is the gift of God, not of good works, lest any of us should boast. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them, repent, seek the Lord, while he may be found. Call upon the Lord while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his ways and the unrighteous man his thoughts turn to the Lord people and he will have mercy on you and to our God who will abundantly pardon the Bible says he that covers his sins shall not prosper but whoever confesses and forsakes his sins shall have mercy what must I do to inherit eternal life ladies where will you spend eternity after you die you will die. Every one of us will die. And every one of us will spend eternity either in heaven or in hell. Where will you spend eternity after you die? Repent. Hey, I remember Believe you. In Christ. I, I remember you. Well, I hope you remember the gospel. Me the word, I don't know what you're wild about now. Well, praise the Lord, you heard the word, my friend. Where are you at now? Well, I'm out. And you know, where are you at now? I, I met you inside. You met me where? Inside. Inside where? Inside where, where you learn that? You must have heard the gospel somewhere being preached, either by me or by another another brother. There's a different version now? Preaching the gospel, only one gospel. Only one God. ¿Cómo te llamas? Only one God. ¿Te acuerdas en español? ¿Cómo te llamas? Era, iba a saber cómo se llama la iglesia esa, cómo se llamaba, la apostólica de Sacramento. Yo nunca he ido ahí a, a, un, a un edificio llamado apostólica. Ba, ba, ¿Bautista o apostólico? No. Entonces, ¿qué eras? Arrepiéntete, amigo. Ah, no, ¿Y pero, cuánto fue en Cristo? No, pues no me ha llevado a ningún lado. ¿Y se te puede librar del pecado? Mira, por... ¿Listo, me dio para librarte del pecado, para salvarte del pecado? Por la, por la razón de que no me arrepentí, llegué aquí a este lugar. Arrepiéntete. No. Ningún, al, al, al cielo no va a entrar ningún borracho, ningún idólatra. Ningún afeminado. ¿Sabes qué me llevó al arrepentimiento? ¿Qué? A la afeminación. ¿Que te llevó al arrepentimiento la, la bondad de Dios? No, no, me llevó ¿De a la... que Dios? No, me llevó a cuando llegué, cuando yo conocí y tuve contacto con mi lado femenino, es porque me había... Arrepiéntate, joven. Me había arrepentido. Yo no voy a hacer por nada. No, de ahí para arriba, miren. Yo no voy a hacer por nada, joven. No, 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 no. Te burla, pero mañana, al infierno, si mueres hoy sin Cristo, if you die without Christ, if you die without Christ, oh, my friends, I fear for your souls. I fear for your soul, for your never dying soul, for your never dying soul. I fear.
here for your soul, people. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. If you're not in Christ, you're condemned. If anyone does not love the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema maranatha. Let him be eternally condemned. Oh Lord, come quickly. Si alguno no ama a Cristo Jesús, que, que sea anatema, que sea maldito. Oh Cristo, ven pronto. You shall not commit adultery is a transgression of the seventh commandment. You shall not commit adultery. And, and, and Christ not, said, God's not real, bro. Why would you even say that if it's not real? Why, why, why would you? You're just making shit up. Why would you waste your breath? Think about it. If God's not real. Because you're making up the idea. Why not tell me Peter Pan's not real? Well, because who abides by genocide, bro? You know, you know why you deny you, you deny God? The Gen Bible tells me so. Because why? Of genocide, bro. The fool okay has said in his heart there is no God. Yeah, well. The fool has said in his heart there is no God. Reason, right? You're holding down the truth. You the suppress truth of the what? truth and your unrighteousness. You want to oppress people? Because that. Yeah, you're fucked because up. Because that. Man. You see, the Bible says, okay, hey. that you hold down the truth and your unrighteousness because that which we know yeah. that guys manifest in the That's God is right. fake. Jesus is a lie. Fuck yourself. The creation of the world, God's invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead. So that people like them are without excuse because that when they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, neither were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts. Their foolish hearts were darkened, professing themselves to be wise. They became fools, and they changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like the corruptible man, and to birds, and portrayed a beast, and creeping things. Wherefore God gave them up to their uncleanness, to the lust of your own heart, to the start of the price of themselves who changed the truth of God into a lie, and they worship and they serve the creature rather than God, the holy creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. And for this cause, God gave you up to vile affections, for even the women did change their natural use into that which is against nature. Likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of the woman they burn in their lust, one or another. Men with men, committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves that recompense of the error which was meat. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to their parents, without natural affection, Covenant breakers, without understanding, without discernment, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that those who commit such things are worthy of death, will not be deceived. Do you not know that the unrighteous, they will not inherit the kingdom of God, neither fornicators, those who commit sex, before marriage, no idolaters, those who worship and they serve the creature rather than God, the Holy Creator, nor adulterers, those who are unfaithful to their wedding vows, nor the effeminate, nor the effeminate, there is no abusers of the whole mankind, there is no homosexual, no lesbian, no thieves, no revilers, no drunkards, no the covetous, they will not inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of us. You see, such were in times past, but now we are washed, and now we are sanctified, and now we are justified, declared righteous, declared forgiven in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of my God. Many people in America 
are religious. They have a form of godliness. You see, many people in America are just religious. They name the name of Christ, but they have not departed from iniquity. The Lord God knows. He knows those who are His. The Lord God knows His sheep. And all those, all those, everyone who names the name of Christ must depart from iniquity. You must turn from sin. Follow Christ. I've known people who say, hey, I've stopped drinking now. i stopped smoking, so now I'm good. You see, God commands you to repent and believe the gospel. Believe on Christ. What does it mean to believe on Christ? What does it mean to believe on Christ? That you just believe that Christ died on the cross for your sins, he was buried for his words again? Is that an intellectual belief? An intellectual belief? No. Do not be deceived. You're hearing God's word. Okay, check yourself before you die. We don't know when we're going to die. It is a point that the man wants to die. But after this is the judgment. After this is the judgment. What is your life but a vapor? You see, it is given to us three score, ten years, seventy years. And if a reason of strength, eighty years. Where, yet, where is the boast? It is labor and soul. For they are soon cut off, and then we fly away to meet our maker. Or who knows the power of, of God's anger? For as the fear of you, he says, so is God's wrath. May the Lord teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Our days are numbered. You see, this world by its nature, in its fallen nature, celebrates birthdays. I only got one birth, one physical birth. And I only got one physical birth and a second birth. And the only birth, my friend, that I care about is the second birth. Praise God that by, his, by God's grace, by God's grace, born again by God's Spirit, quickened, my friends, made alive by God's grace. You see, Titus chapter 3 describes the nature of man without Christ. We ourselves were foolish in times past. Foolish as we look around. When I was young, I used to drive around with my friends wasting gas, with playing loud music. The music of the fool. You see, the song of fools, the Bible says, better to hear the rebuke of the wise than the song of fools, for as the crack in the thorns under a pot, so is the laughter of the fool. Okay? You see, that was my life. In fact, it wasn't even a life, it was a death, a death style when I was dead in my sins. We ourselves were foolish, disobedient, disobedient to God's word, foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers lust and pleasures, living in malice and envy and hateful and hating one another. But after that, the kindness and the love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, not by wor works of righteousness, not by any righteous deed, whether it be water baptism, whether it be partaking of the, of the Lord's Supper, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, not by any merit of my own, not by any religious ritual, not by any good deed, which we have done, but according to God's mercy, and that God does not give me the punishment I deserve, that's God's mercy. He saved us. He saves his people by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, which God shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we shall be made heirs of the hope of eternal life. Repent. Believe the gospel. Repent. Seek the Lord. What is your life? Every one of us here, every one of us will die. You're not going to live over 120 years. You're not going to live over 120 years. Within 100 years, every one of you, de aquí a, de, amigo, arrepiéntase. Ponga su fe en Cristo, no nomás diga amén, sino que arrepiéntase, clame al Señor, Señor, ven, piedad un pecador, repent, believe on Christ, repent, 
believe the gospel people. What is your life? But a vapor, a vapor, a mist, a mist. We're here now. We are here now for a little time, for a little time. And then what will it profit a man? That you have gained the whole world, but you lost your soul in hell. Do not love the world, nor the things of the world. You see, do not love the world, nor the things of the world. If any man loves the world, the love of God the Father is not in it. You love the world, it means you don't love God the Father. You love the things of the world, it means you don't love God the Father. You see, for all that is in the world, all that is in the world, riches, all in the world, these nice cars, all is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, the pride of life, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, it is not of God the Father, it is of the world, and this world is passing away. This world and the lust thereof, it's all passing away. But he who does the will of God will abide forever. He who does the will of God will abide forever. There are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and the like of which, young ladies, Paul says, I'll tell you again, as I told you in times past, that those who practice such things, they will not inherit the kingdom of God, but the fruit of the Spirit, the evidence that you're a new, that you're a new creature in Christ, the evidence that you're a child of God and not a child of the devil. But the fruit of the Spirit is love for Christ, love for His Word, love for the Gospel. Okay? The fruit of a born again believer, when a woman comes to Christ, her glory, she lays down at the feet of Christ. She begins to wash the feet of Christ with her tears. And she lays down her pride. The pride, my friend, women today who pride themselves in their hair, in the way they dress, to seduce, in the way they, the time they spend before the mirror fixing their hair in order to draw attention, the hair that was given to her as her glory. This woman is humble at the feet of Christ, using her hair as a towel to wipe the feet of Christ and she is kissing his feet and she she breaks the alabaster box of ointment and she anoints his feet and Simon the Pharisee in his pride filled heart he murmurs begin himself within himself saying if this man were a, a prophet a man sent from God he would know who and what type of woman this is that is touching him for she is a sinner. Jesus Christ who knows the heart of hearts. Who knows your heart. He knows everything you're thinking. He knows your every secret. Jesus Christ who heard Simon murmuring in his wicked heart. He says, Simon, I have something to say to you. Simon says, Ma Master, go ahead, say on. Jesus Christ said there was a certain creditor, a banker, a lender, who had two debtors, the one owner. The one had a huge debt. The one had a huge debt. The other had a small debt. When they both had nothing to pay back, he frankly forgave them both. He cleared the debt, paid in full. He says to Simon, Simon, which one of the two do you think will love the creditor most? Simon says, I suppose that he to whom he forgave the most to whom he forgave the most. Jesus Christ says, Simon, you are rightly judged. Now that's righteous judgment right there. And Simon responds with the truth. To whom he forgave the most. 
Jesus Christ says, Simon, see now this woman, I came into your house, you gave me no water for my feet, but she has washed my feet with her tears, and has anointed my feet, and, and she has wiped them with the hairs of her head. Simon, you gave me no kiss, no holy kiss, but this woman since the time I came in has not ceased to kiss my feet. Simon, Simon, you did not anoint my, my head with oil. But this woman has anointed my feet with her ointment, for I say to you that her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. This is the result of salvation, in that we love Jesus Christ much. For the sake of Christ, we're called fanatics, we're called narrow-minded, we're called judgmental. They say we're doing too much. We've been called all kinds of names. Paul said, for the, by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. He said, but I labored more abundant than, than they are yet, not high. But the grace of God, which was with me, for the grace of God that brings salvation, people, has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously and godly in this present world. Are you a true believer? Have you been forgiven much? Then you should be loving Jesus Christ much, looking for that blessed hope and that glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, that's Jesus Christ. My great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity, and purify for himself a special people, a peculiar people. For now in Christ we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, no longer a Raiders or, or Niners nation. Now we are a holy nation set apart to serve Christ. Holy nation, a peculiar special people. We are a special bride that we should proclaim forth. Why did Jesus Christ save us? Why did he call us out of darkness into his marvelous light? That we should proclaim forth the praises of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in times past, we were not a people. In times past, some of us were cholos, some of us were cholos before Christ saved us. Some of us were homosexuals. Some of us were, what were we before Christ saved us? We followed the course of the world. We followed the fashions. We followed the course of this world before Christ saved us. You see, before Christ saved me, I was a wannabe cholo. Now in Christ, who do we follow? Jesus Christ said, if any man will come after me, you must deny yourself. You must take up your cross daily and follow me. Many people have come out of a certain sect of religion to a different sect of religion. Some have come out of Catholicism into the Watchtower Society. Some have come out of Catholicism into a sect called apostolic or Pentecostal, whatever you want to call yourself, whatever demonation you want to call yourself after. My friends, you see, we, my friends, by God's grace, have been called out of darkness into his marvelous light to proclaim forth, again, proclaim forth the praise of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. What are we commanded to preach? To preach the gospel as believers in Christ. We're called to preach the gospel, not preach ourselves. Not come to my building. No, go to Christ. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Seek the Lord. You know, a lot of professed Christians in America are disobedient to the Great Commission. Many professed Christians, as they walk by the preacher, they do that cross on their chest. That superstition, not going to save you. Okay, that, that cross on your chest, 
Before Christ saved me, I used to do that too. When I was a when I was a nominal Catholic, I used to do that too. I was foolish. That's what the Bible says when it says we were foolish. We did all kinds of foolish things before Christ saved us. We were disobedient to the word of God. You see that cross on your chest is not gonna save you from sin, nor for the wrath to come. Look to Jesus Christ, who was crucified on the cross of Calvary. Look to Jesus by faith. Look to Jesus, ladies, by faith. Look to Jesus, not that graven image that you have on your wall. That long-haired, sissified-looking Jesus with his eyes rolled up. Not that. That's an abomination. We ought not to think that the divine nature of God is like gold or silver or stone or something shaped by art or by your own wicked imagination. Look to Jesus. The Jesus revealed in the Holy Scriptures, the, 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 the Pharisees, they searched the Scriptures, they said, Jesus Christ said, but you think that in them you have eternal life, but they are they which testify of me. The Scriptures testify of Christ. Look to Christ. For as it was in the days of Noah, so it be also the days of the Son of Man, and that people were eating, people were drinking, marrying, and giving the marriages until the day that Noah entered the ark. The flood came and destroyed all those who were outside the ark. All those who were outside of the ark. That ark is a picture, it is a type of Christ. All those who were outside the ark, they were, they were. What happened to the ones who were outside that? They were destroyed. God spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, the preacher of righteousness. Bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. The flood of God's wrath. You better believe it, people. The flood of God's wrath is coming upon the world of the ungodly. Y'all hear the news? There's a storm coming. It's supposed to rain tomorrow. Y'all hear the news? There's a storm coming. There's a hurricane coming. People prepare. Y'all hear the good news? Christ is coming to judge. People don't care. As it was in the days of Noah. As it was in the days of Lot. It's going to be also the days that the Son of Man just before Christ comes to judge. As it was in the days of Lot. People were eating and drinking. And now they're more civilized. Now they're building and planting. And now they're planting, building. And to the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, the Lord's mercy, by the hand of the angels, pulls them out of Sodom. The Lord warns them, do not look back. Do not look back. And the Lord rained brimstone and fire from the Lord in heaven. There is God's judgment. There is Jesus. And there is God the Father bringing judgment upon, upon Sodom and Gomorrah. Genesis chapter 19, and the Lord rained brims and fire from the Lord in heaven, read carefully, and destroyed them all, destroyed them all. And Lot's wife, she looked back. Remember Lot's wife? Don't be like Lot's wife, who was married to a just man, but she was not married to the Lord. You can be, you can have all kinds of influence of the gospel. You can hear the gospel left and right. You can be in a building called church, and you can be a son or daughter of a, of a born-again believer, or the husband or wife of a born-again Christian. But unless you're born again, you will never see, you will never enter into the kingdom of God. Salvation is of the Lord. We cannot save ourselves. You cannot save your children. Teach your children the word of God, and that from a child, you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise. You see, the parents, they brought the little children to Jesus, that he may touch them and bless them. The disciples, they rebuked them, saying, the devil rebuked them, but Jesus Christ's response was, allow the little children, suffer, allow the little children to come to me, for of such, is the kingdom of God of such who come to Christ for outside of Christ there is no salvation what hope 
are we giving our children if we are not bringing them or pointing them or leading them to Jesus? Jesus Christ is the gospel. Jesus Christ says in Matthew 19, in Luke 8, in Mark 10, there is no one good but one, and that is God. Only God is good. Understand this. This is why we all need Christ from the youngest to the oldest. We all need Christ. Allow the little children to come to me, for of such is the kingdom of God. For whosoever, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as Jesus Christ himself, shall not enter into the kingdom of God. Matthew 18, the disciples, they were disputed among themselves, which would be the greatest Jesus Christ called when they they asked him master who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven jesus christ called a little child to himself puts him in the middle and when i take him in his arms he said to them verily i say to you except you be converted and you become as a little child you cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven and whoever humbles himself as this little child, the same shall be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And that from a child, you have known the holy scriptures, the importance of teaching little children from the time they're in the mother's womb, the word of God, which is able to make them wise unto salvation, which is by faith through Jesus Christ our Lord. For all scripture, is given by inspiration of God, and it is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect and thoroughly furnished unto every good work. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Even a child is known by his deeds, whether they be pure and whether they be right. Because the carnal mind is that enmity against God. The carnal mind is that enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God. So then they who are in the flesh, they cannot please God, sir. If you're not born again, no matter what good work you do, you cannot please God. All of your good works, all of your sacrifices, all of your righteousnesses, are as filthy, menstrual, stinking rags in the eyes of the all-seeing God. Seek the Lord. Cry out the Lord. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. You see, on this one the Lord looks on. On him who is of a contrite, humble spirit, trembles at his word. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. These the Lord God does not despise. It is that broken heart, that humble spirit that acknowledges, acknowledges its con his condition, that he is miserable, as Christ says in Revelation 3, but you don't know that you're, that you're wretched, you're miserable, that you're blind, that you're naked. He said, I counsel you to buy gold for me to be found in a fire, that you may be rich and white raiment that you may be clothed and that the shame of your nakedness does not appear and anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see seek the lord people while he may be found call upon him while he is near seek the lord the lord one god one mediator one mediator between god and man the man christ jesus who gave himself as a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Seek Christ and live. According to Psalms chapter 2, kiss the Son. Kiss the Son, Jesus. Let he be angry at you and you perish from the way when his wrath is kindled by a little. Blessed are all those who put their trust in Jesus Christ, ma'am. Only Christ can save you, ma'am. What is your life but a vapor, young lady? 
where will you spend eternity after you die? Two resurrections, many that sleep in the dust of the earth shall wake some to everlasting life, everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt, everlasting contempt, everlasting hatred towards God, everlasting gnashing, weeping, weeping, gnashing of teeth. That's what awaits those who die without Christ. Where will you spend eternity after you die? I saw a great white throne and him who sat upon it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. There was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. And the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And they were judged according to the things which were written in the books, according to their works. And the sea, the sea, the oceans, all those who died in the seas, the sea gave up the dead. Here is the resurrection of the damned. The sea gave up the dead who were in them and death and hell. All those who were buried, all those who died without Christ, whether in the ocean or in the or were buried in the earth. But now they're being resurrected. The death and hell, delivered of the dead which are in them. And they were judged, every man according to his works. And death and hell. Death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. You see, all those, all those who have only, all those who have only been born once will die twice. And all those who have been born twice will only die once. Oh, grave, where is your victory? You see, oh, death, where is your sting for those who are in Christ? Death is swallowed up in victory. The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law, but thanks be to God, which gives us the victory to our Lord, Jesus Christ. Death and hell were cast into the lake of fire, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire, my friend. Repent. Believe on Jesus, my friend. Believe on Christ. Cry out the Lord. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. You're not saved by asking Jesus into your heart. You're not saved by becoming a member of a, of a religious building called church. You're not saved by water baptism, by any work of righteousness. You see, what is impossible with man, what is impossible with sinful man, is only possible with the perfect Savior, Jesus Christ. You cannot be saved by your own merits, by your own bootstraps, by your own good deeds. That's our sinful nature. This is why the young rich man, this is why the young rich man asks, Good master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? This is the fallen nature of man. Man thinks that he can save himself by doing something. That is the nature of fallen man. Fallen man thinks that he can be saved by going to a building called church. And my wife, I've noticed that oftentimes when there is a beggar, a beggar beside us, the people, as they hear the word, they try to shut the mouth of their conscience by giving money to the beggar. They think that by giving money, by giving spare change to a beggar, that they're getting right with God. Rather than obeying the scriptures, repent, believe on Christ. The only good work that can save you is the work that Christ accomplished on the cross. But we notice this often in that people who try to do good works, they try to do better and do better and better in order to get right with God. My friends, what is impossible with sinful man is only possible with God through his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said, I am the way. Christ is the way to those who are lost. Christ said, I am the truth to those who are deceived. And all of us by nature, outside of Christ, all of us by nature, outside of Christ, we are lost, we are deceived, and we are dead in our sins. And Jesus Christ said, I am the way. 
to those who are lost. I am the truth to those who are deceived, and I am the life, the abundant life, the eternal life to those who are dead in their trespass and sins. So if you're hearing his voice, if you're hearing his voice, if you're hearing the voice of the Good Shepherd, do not hide in your heart. Respond to his voice. Respond to the respond to the gospel by crying out to Jesus, Lord, have mercy on me, a wicked sinner. Believe on Christ and that he died on the cross for your sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the holy scriptures. Repent, believe the gospel.